Hey guys, Gordon here from G-Create. Now we've been searching forever to try and find some really cool high-res models of kind of ruins and, and medieval structures, things like that. Well, we're in luck because we finally found some. So the folks over at printablescenery.com shared a few models with us and we're very excited to print them. So stay tuned. All right, so as I mentioned, uh, printablescenery.com is uh, what it sounds like. It's printable scenery. So they have really great models, really high-res models for um, for you to print out, in a lot of cases to paint or to uh, to color to your desire. But uh, in our case, we like just printing them raw uh, with a kind of a shiny filament. But uh, really, really great models. Uh, we tried out some under the Winterdale series. As you'll see in a moment, we printed the... Um, the Chapel, which is just a fantastic model. Really high quality, great stuff. Uh, it prints in two parts if you want. Uh, we printed at 100% scale, but again, just great stuff. So we're gonna jump into Simplify 3D and I'll show you some of the settings we used uh, as well as the model itself. All right, so here we are in Simplify 3D. Uh, this is the uh, chapel, the bottom of it, as I just mentioned. And um, you know, one thing we wanna mention is uh, to make a good 3D print, uh, there's, there's several factors that are involved. Uh, First, you need to have a great printer, you need to have great filament, uh, you need to have the right settings, but also you really need to have a great 3D model, which is made for 3D printing. You know, And when you have a, a high quality model that's actually been designed to be 3D printed, but also is clean and just, just high detail, it really makes a big difference. So these models, as you see here, are just great detail, they're perfect for for you know smaller printers larger printers and they scale really well so we hope to be printing a lot more of these in a lot of different scales but in this example we tried printing it at 100 percent scale um, we tried something a little different where we were angling it on purpose a because we wanted to see if our gopro could capture it better but also we were trying to see if we had better results in detail uh, by putting instead of going horizontal or i guess you could say perpendicular to the, the the axes here we try to put it at a skew to see if maybe we would get a better better detail here uh it wasn't really the the case so in this example uh we tried it a lot of 3d printing is testing and trying and failing or succeeding and seeing what works um but in the top part that you'll see later we we just put it you know flat on the bed so it's, there's no rotation and uh it printed pretty nicer but um the settings i used uh, i'm going to open up a factory file I uh, don't want to save that. So this actually is the factory file. And here's the settings we used. We just did it very simply. Um, the left extruder with uh, 0.2 layer height, couple top and bottom layers, uh, solid layers anyway. I think the infill was pretty low, 15%. Uh, this is not necessarily a tutorial on, on using Slicer or Simplify 3D because we've, uh, we've used it. We've shown you in a couple of the tutorials, but I just want to show you the settings we used. Uh, we did not need any um, brims in this case, we just did one skirt. One thing we did do, you'll see here, the default printing speed is 75 and the under speed is 40. For the top one, we actually made this 30 and kept the uh, default printing speed pretty high, uh, mainly because uh, there's a lot of detail and you want to make sure that you can cool all that detail enough, but also you don't get any other unwanted movement. So it took a little bit longer to do the print, but it came out beautifully. It really was a high quality print. So we're, we're happy with that. Um, and again, another thing I changed, uh, this is the original model that we printed with the left extruder and the retraction distance was one. And here's the settings for the nozzle diameter. You'll find that sometimes for whatever reason, this is a little bit, uh, it extrudes a little bit too thick. So in the second one, in, in the top part, what I did was I put this to 0.94, I believe. Um, and kept it at manual uh, 0.6 millimeter um, extrusion width. Uh, that's the automatic setting for Simplify 3D. And by just bringing it down 6%, the multiplier, it really just, it, it made it made the print that much cleaner and that much better on the edges. So sometimes those little things can really, really help, uh, but it's all per model. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and hit prepare to print. All right, so here is the, the model uh, as it's been um, sliced in all the layers. And you can see it's just, it's a really nice model. It came out great. Uh, it's about, it says about 10 hours. I think in, in all honesty, this one took about nine hours, something like that. Um, and yeah, 196 uh, grams of filament. Yeah, that's about right. It was about 200 grams in the end. But here you see all the layers. Uh, what we had to do for this particular model was turn off auto bed leveling because we had a GoPro camera sitting in the corner. But um, our bed was level enough that it didn't really matter. And especially since the first layer was a little bit thicker. Um, 
Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and show you the top because that's really probably the most impressive part here. So let's just remove that and drop in the top. And what will happen now is all those settings will, will stay. So if I drop it in now. So all the settings we used to uh, we used for the previous one will stay. I want to go ahead and rotate this. So like I said, I did it to 90 degrees. And then what you can do, I pulled it further to the back, mainly for the GoPro. So if you hold down Control and drag your model, you can actually move it around the bed. Same if you hold down Alt, you can rotate it. It doesn't lock on the axes necessarily, so I don't like using that. But you can also undo. But here I put the model somewhere around here, so it's a little bit further back. And um, this really is just a great looking model with some great detail. Really just looks really neat. The, the roof tiles look so cool. Um, the windows below came out great. These uh, these kind of pendants on top here look great. What what I did, and of course, because it's a delicate model, when you're done, is I actually broke one of these off, so I just have to glue that back on. But uh, aside from that, it really it really came out great. I guess my only uh, my only um, suggestion to them would be that if if these two models were were together, we could print them all in one pass as opposed to two halves. I'm sure there's a reason they did not do that, but um, it, it wasn't a big deal to print them both separately. So I'm going to go ahead and prepare to print this now. So here it is. This is the uh, the, the finished model that's been prepared for, for printing, and it really just looks great. I mean, really cool stuff. I can change it to, um, I guess movement speed's the best, but if we scroll through the layers, you can see the inside's actually hollow for these, so they print a little bit quicker, and you can actually light the inside of the model or whatever. Um, Really cool though. If I do the uh, preview by layer. <laughs> really cool. So yeah, so let's go ahead and uh, take this. We're gonna save it to the uh, save it to the SD card and we're gonna um, we're gonna pop that into the Gmax printer and we have two cool time lapses to, for you to check out. Um, I must warn you, the first time lapse, our light burned out, and we didn't know that, <laughs> so it's a bit dark, but that was the base, and then the top, um, the light was fine, so um, unfortunately the first one's a bit dark, but we decided to throw it in anyway, we'll do it real fast, and then we'll, um, we'll show you the second one, so stay tuned. All right, so here's the completed model. Uh, printed great. We, um, as you see here, it was two parts like we showed before. Um, the lower portion here is where we tried doing that 10, 10 degree rotation there, but um, it, it came out nice. I think the top came out better with where it was, where it was straight on. The details came out beautiful, and um, really, it was a great print. This is where that high cooling and slow speed comes into play that we were talking about because there's a lot of fine little details in there that uh, that need to have enough time to cool, or else they might curl up. Um, and you can kind of see some of them, uh, some of them here. But um, you can also try using something called Z lift. So sometimes what that, that'll do is lift up the Z axis as it's as it's printing each uh, subsequent layer, and that'll usually help cool it a little bit more. But here you can see the beautiful detail in the uh, spikes in the top part of the uh, of the uh, cathedral or uh, chapel rather. Here's some more shots of the the detail. But uh, really, overall, great model, great quality, great print. So we hope you enjoyed this short little video where we showed off a really cool model from the friends over at PrintableScenery.com. Now, we're going to be printing a lot more of this stuff because it's really neat. But uh, they also have to have a Kickstarter campaign going on right now. So if you want to see more work like this and help support their new campaign, check it out in the link below. And we hope you enjoyed the video. Keep on printing.